sharing with the church is the damages the Antichrist has done to the church in these last days. The wound he has given to the church. And now Jesus is crying for the church. He's calling the church that the church will return back to him. That he is the only one that can give the church for that wound. He is the only one that can lead the church from that way. But today the church is still refused to turn to God. They still refuse to turn to Jesus. Today we are going to be addressing some areas of our lives which we are finding difficult in serving God. We are addressing these areas and this evening we will go into deliverance prayers. Because there are so many people, they really want to serve God. There's, there's a contrary spirit that is living inside of them that they are carrying that is resisting them to serve God. And so they are finding it difficult for them to serve God. Why? Because there's a spirit resisting them from serving God. And tonight we will be addressing all these areas. The Lord will give us grace in the name of Jesus. Come with me with your Bible very quickly to the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. 1 John, chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. 1 John, chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. If you are there, you can read. 1 John, 4, 1 to 4. 1 John, 4, 1 to 4. The word of God says, Below. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether they are of God. He says, this place is telling us that brethren, beloved, my beloved brethren, believe not every spirit. He said, but test that spirit, whether it be of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Because in these last days we have many false prophets who were assigned by the devil to go out into the world to deceive many. Two, by this you know the spirit of God. He said that by that spirit of discernment, by the spirit of discernment you know the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, Every spirit that says Jesus Christ has come in the form of a man, that spirit is of God. Because Jesus, he came in the form of a man to die for the sin of man. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Any spirit that says Jesus did not come in the flesh, that spirit is not of God. And that spirit is the spirit of the Antichrist, the son of perdition. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was falling and is now already in the world. For the last, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. Jesus has come in the flesh. And so any spirit that said Jesus did not come in the flesh, that spirit is the spirit of the Antichrist. And the Bible made us to understand that even now the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. The spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. It is the spirit of the Antichrist that goes out to make preparation for his arrival. Just as the Holy Spirit of God also goes out from the presence of God to prepare the believers for the coming of Christ. That is how the spirit of the Antichrist also goes out into the world to make preparation for his own arrival. And these two spirits, they are contrary to each other. They don't agree. The spirit of the Lord and the spirit of the devil can never come to one unity. No. They are contrary to each other. They don't work together. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. First John chapter 2, 18 to 19. First John 2, 18 to 19. First John 2, 18 to 19. Yes. He 
says, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many Antichrists are come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 19 the last. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest, that none of them were of us. Amen. Amen. This is the episode of John the Bar. He is reminding the children of God, the little children, my brethren, my children, children of God, remember that we are the last hour, and as you have heard, Antichrist shall come. He said, even now are there many Antichrists in the world. Every prophecy given by the Bible, every prophecy in the Bible must only come to pass. And I tell you, this particular passage of this Bible is coming to pass. Because today we have many Antichrists in the world who are out there deceiving many. Today we have Jesus of Australia, we have Jesus of India. All these, they are literally to Antichrist, raised up by the devil for them to deceive humanity. For them to deceive man. For man to be deceived. And you see them, they perform lying wonders, lying signs and wonders before the sight of men. And men follow them. Men follow their teachings. Men follow their doctrine. The Bible says that these people, they were of the children of God. They were of the foes of God. So, but because their heart was not perfect with God, they went out and they joined themselves to the devil. They joined themselves to the devil and they began to work for sin that they refused to work for God again. They began to walk for the devil. And the Bible says that if supposing those people they were with us in one unity, in one likeness, in one form, and in one fear of God, they would have no doubt remained with us. They said, but because their mind was divided, their heart was divided, they went out away from the presence of God. And they joined themselves to the world. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 to 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 to 12. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 12. Remember, 
That is the working that he is coming to do for Satan. That is the work he is coming to do for the devil. Because the devil is his father and the loss of his father, the devil, that he must fulfill. That he must fulfill. And he will cause many, he will cause man, that man should believe a lie. He will come and deceive man with unrighteousness. Telling man that to be righteous is not good, but to be unrighteous is good. And he will make man to believe a lie and make man to have pleasure in unrighteousness. That man will no longer want to serve God, then man will want to serve the devil. And the Bible says, because of this, because man hearkened to the voice of the devil, the Bible says, God will send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. That they should believe the lie of the devil. So that he can touch them and destroy them. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. But the talk of the sins of December 2013, the Lord gave me the third presentation. When the Lord visited me, the Lord took me to that same place. He took me to when He visited me the second time, the place called hell. We entered hell. Everything there increased. And then the Lord began to Jesus said, We go to give unto the power. And when He said it, He you need to know that he meant it. He has given you power over the powers of the enemies, over the powers of darkness. And so when you fail, when you fail as a Christian to exercise the power of God given to you over the powers of darkness, when you die, God will send you to hell. God will send you to hell. God will send you to hell. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Now I want to tell us a few of the wounds the Antichrist has given to the church. Number one, the Antichrist took away spirituality and brought carnality into the church. The Antichrist took away spirituality from the children of God and they brought in carnality into the house of God. During those days, during the days of the apostles, the believers when they are praying, they always pray in the spirit that today the Antichrist has taken away that level of spirituality and he has brought in carnality that today you see believers they now pray in the flesh. They now pray in the flesh. When they are praying, they are praying because they are praying in the flesh. They become weak, they be tired, and they relax. But during the days of the apostles, when the fire of revival was still fresh to them, that God gave to them, they always pray in the spirit. And that is why the Bible is advising us that we should always pray in the spirit. When you pray in the flesh, there is no way God can answer your prayer. How can flesh communicate with spirit? It is not possible. Spirit communicates with spirit. Flesh communicates with flesh. When you are not praying in the spirit, there is no way God will hear you and there is no way God can answer you. But when you pray in the spirit, your spirit communes with God. You hear God speaking to you and your spirit speaks to God. God answers you immediately. Why? Because you pray in the spirit. But today, the Antichrist has dealt with that level of spirituality. The Antichrist has death without spirit, which the children of God ought to pray in. And he has given them analysis. Today, Christians are not praying in the flesh. Number two, the Antichrist brought comparison into the church. That today you see Christians, fellow Christians, competing with themselves in the house of God. Today, we hear of the latest bringing judge. You see Christians, all of them are competing. Ah, this religion are competing not to buy a place in this church. You see them competing with themselves. Sister Janet, this is your rapper. How much did you buy? Sister Janet, I bought my rapper at 30,000. You see, ah, you're only this for me. I bought my own 50,000. 
All these things are what Jesus is saying in his house and he's crying every day. Now the guys has brought comparison into the church that you see believers they compare themselves with all believers. And the Bible says those who compare themselves that they are unwise, the Bible calls them fools. Be content with what you have. What God has given to you, hold it very well. Don't look at your neighbor's soul. Comparison is not in the house of God today. You see, pastors, they compare themselves. So they ask me, they say, Are you how many services are you only in the Sunday? Some of them say, I'm only five services in one Sunday, and the five services is one more hour. What do the people gain from one hour? You see them, they compare themselves all because they have left their first love. They have left their first love. So if you, you are here as a child of God, you are here as a Christian, and you are comparing yourself, the Bible says you are a fool. You are a fool to compare yourself. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Number three. The Antichrist brought in the spirit of Jezebel into the church. According to the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. The Antichrist brought in the spirit of Jezebel into the church. Today you see pastors who are pastors who are Jezebel. Jezebel is now in the church today causing havoc to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ we are there looking. We cannot do anything about that. Jesus Christ is saying that he's crying every day. Jezebel is not in the house of God today. Today you see a, a girl, you say you are a Christian. You put on the steps with the eye issue. You paint your face, you paint red, you paint blue, you paint black, every color you have it on your face. Sharp fingernails, in hell, if you saw them demons that carry this, then you see them, they carry this all in the name of fashion. You paint your mouth. All these things, they are all the properties of that woman, Jesus. You say you are a Christian, you put on spaghetti, open front and open back. And you come into the church with your hand back. If you are cooking, you begin to make your hand up to seduce men. And some of these people, when they come into the church, they know that what they are putting is very short. They will not go and hide themselves in the back. You see that on the front. When the pastor is preaching, if that pastor is not one day enough, the pastor will not come back there. Then before you know, the pastor will begin to preach another thing to the Jews. You look at the female demon. All these demons, they are all daughters of Jezebel. If you are dressing like this, it is certain that you are a daughter of Eve, you are a daughter of Jezebel. So then the spirit of Jezebel is in the church, and the church, they are correlating her, they are correlating that spirit. And today, the worst of all is pastor's wife. After dressing one, you will see them with long with one on their head that we saw to their foot of. All in the name of fashion, 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 running after the fashion of this world. Jesus is kind every day for the church. The church needs to wake up. Number four. The Antichrist changed the doctrine that Jesus gave to the church and gave them his own doctrine. He changed the doctrine, the original doctrine set by Jesus for the church to follow. The Antichrist entered into the church. He meandered his way into the church with his craftiness. And the church, because they have slept, they did not recognize the Antichrist. And then the Antichrist gradually changed the original doctrine and gave them the soul. And the Antichrist has three doctrines. Number one, unisex. Number two, it doesn't matter. Number three, come as you are. Unisex, any 
the say that a man can be as a woman, a woman can be as a man. Today you see men, they put on women's wear, women put on men's wear, in the sex, in the house of women. These are the three countries of the Antichrist. And any pastor that is telling you it doesn't matter, run away from him, he's teaching you the doctrine of Antichrist. He wants to damn your soul. That pastor that is telling you, come as you are, it doesn't matter. When you get to a call, I don't try a call. Thief, come, all come. All, all because they want to have your body. Run away from them. Because they are assigned by the devil for them to bring people to hell. Today, the devil has now brought in a new means for him to bring women to hell. He gave the women trouser. Women trouser. It is only man that trouser is made for. Trouser is not made for women. Women, you have skirt and blouse. You have skirt, you have blouse. You have wrapper for you to pack. When the only one trouser God gave to man, you are still dragging it to them. You are still dragging the trouser with man. And now Satan, he has now produced another one for him to deceive you very well. That there is really trouser and there is really trouser. Who told you? When you follow this path, you will die and you will find yourself in hell. You will find yourself in hell. But the Lord deliver his church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four. The Antichrist took away spiritual nourishment and brought in eating and drinking into the church. Out of Apostle chapter 6 verse 1. Instead of the believers to be growing in the spirit, to nourish themselves with spiritual things, the Antichrist took away spiritual nourishment and he brought in eating and drinking in the house of God. Now today you do you see Christians. Christian brother and sister are fighting because of food. Because of food in the church. You see, fellow Christian sisters, they break bottle, they fight, they stab themselves, they wound themselves all because of food. Why? Because they allow the Antichrist to enter into the church. Instead of them to be spiritually nourished, for them to nourish one another spiritually. To nourish one another spiritually. They are there. Eating and drinking. Sleeping. Dining and whining. And why things are going wrong in the church. And Jesus is saying all this and is crying everything. His heart is bleeding for his church. And the church, they are quiet. They are there looking and watching things going wrong in the house of God. When God's judgment will begin, God said, I will begin my judgment for my house. And when God's judgment will come, God's judgment will be very terrible. He will begin with his own children. The judgment that God will give to his children will be higher than the judgment he will give to all believers. That is God for you and you cannot question him. God is angry with the church in this last day. The church needs to return back to him and wake up to the true doctrine given to the church by Jesus. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number six. The Antichrist changed the original vision that God gave to his ministers and he gave the ministers of God another vision. He gave them another vision. That is why today you see a pastor, when he started, he started with holiness and righteousness for the true doctrine of Christ. Then as God began to bless him, the Antichrist comes and he takes that original doctrine and gave him another one. He gave him another vision. Today, you see that pastor has departed and he has started preaching another thing. The Antichrist has succeeded in changing the original vision given to him. Every man born into this world, you have a vision given to you by God. And so when the Antichrist has seen the vision of God in your life, you must fight to make sure he changes. He changed the original doctrine that God gave to his ministers. He 
Change your original vision God gave to his minister. And he gave them the soul. He gave them another vision. He gave them another spirit. He gave them another doctrine. For them to walk and please him. And not to please God. Number seven. They asked the Christ told the pastor's wife to chase him and the ministers for him. You see what the Antichrist has done? He has succeeded in turning pastors wife to Jesus and he turned the pastors to Ahab. Ahab was a man, a man of Israel. He knew about the God of Israel, but when Jesus came, Jesus turned his heart away from God. Jezebel turned his heart away from God and Jezebel made Ahab to sow himself to commit evil. When God came to warn Ahab, the little fear that was in Ahab, Ahab, he felt sorry for committing sin against God. Then when Jezebel came, he turned everything upside down. Today, you see a pastor, the pastor is preaching holiness and righteousness, but your wife is a Jezebel in the church. See, pastor's wife, your husband is on the people who preach in you, you will stand up, you begin to contradict him, you contradict him, right in the presence of members. You want to turn your husband, you want to turn him into a heart. Jesus is saying all this thing in his thoughts and his mind. He's asking questions. Is this the people I died for? Is this the church I have? The church will have a lot of questions to answer on that day before Christ. The church pastors were to Ahab and they turned the ministers. Pastors were to Jesus and they turned the ministers from God to Ahab. He told them to Ahab. May the Lord help this church in the name of Jesus. Number eight. The Antichrist made the people of God not to believe the truth and made them to have pleasure in unrighteousness. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. The Antichrist has succeeded in making the children of God to no longer have pleasure in the truth. They no longer want to hear the truth. All they want to hear is they are blessed in sin. They are blessed in unrighteousness. That is why any pastor that is telling you you are blessed in unrighteousness, run away from him. He wants to damn your soul in hell. Today you see people, they no longer want to hear the truth. The truth is eating their ears. The truth is very bitter to them. The truth is very bitter for them to hear. But all they want to hear is prosperity. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. You are blessed. And rather, go and do your work and bring that and offer. Politician, go and embezzle money and bring it to the church. Come and bring that and offer. That is what they are concerned about. Every Sunday, you see them, hand rubber, you carry Ghana must go fill up with money, you see that coming to get out of the pastor. And the pastor, because of that, he will not preach the truth. He said, he will tell the people what they want to hear. And what the people of this land will want to hear is prosperity in sin. Prosperity in iniquity. To be booming in their business. Inside sin. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pay the people of God to have pleasure in unrighteousness and they no longer want to hear the truth. Number nine. The Antichrist sent his spirit into the church to water down holiness and righteousness in the church. Jehovah said, Be ye holy, for I am also. When God said you should be holy, it means that you must be holy just as he also is holy. But today, the spirit of the Antichrist has succeeded in 
appealing that holiness and that righteousness of God to the church. Now today you see of holiness and of righteousness in the church of God today. And the church, the most painful thing, the church, they are quiet, they are asleep, looking and watching things going wrong. The worst things going wrong, the worst things go out of hands. Oh, God is crying every day for the church. The church has really slept for too long. The church needs to wake up on that sleep. These are the dangerous wounds the Antichrist has given to the church that Jesus is talking about. That is crying, telling the church, come back to me, I will heal you from that room. And the church refuses. The more effort Jesus Christ made to wake up his church from the sleep, the more the church sleep deeper. The more efforts he had, the more the church is continuing to sleep. The church continues. Every day sleep, sleep, sleep. They don't even want to wake up. They don't want to wake up to their responsibilities again. Why? Because the Antichrist has wounded them. Number 10. The spirit of the Antichrist entered the church and took away true signs and wonders and brought in lying wonders into the church. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. We have true miracles, we have genuine miracles. That today, because the church has slipped spiritually, the Antichrist entered the church. And he succeeded in taking away the true signs and wonders that God gave to his people. He gave them another one. He gave them lying signs and wonders. That is why today you see many pastors, they do a prakatabra in their church. They call somebody out, they knock the head of the person, they say, Life is out. And people will shout, Hey! Today, the children of this last day, they are running after miracles. Whether the person is using the power of God, or the power of Satan, or just in one. Hey, Lord, as I'm going to this place, let this pastor prophesy to me. They will tell you your phone number, tell you your father's name, your village, where you came from, the road to your village, everything they will tell you. And you, you are ignorant. Hey, Pastor, it is true, it is true. They are dragging you to hell. They are dragging you to hell. And these ministers, all these ministers who are operating with the lying wonders of the Antichrist, these are the people that the children of this world run after. They run after them. They prophesy to you, they tell you the color of your bra, the color of your underwear. All these things is what Jesus is saying in this church and he's crying every day. He's crying every day for the church. To be lying on that in the house of God. He's crying of death and pretty with the true wonders of Christ. They might be calling in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to understand something. Not everybody that is calling the name of Jesus is their name. Not everybody that is calling Jesus' name is their name. Majority of them, they are calling the name of Jesus in order for them to cover up what they are doing. Some of them, they go to wash their hands in church before coming to Jesus. When they wave their hand, you see an anointing flowing. Anointing the boss of the devil. And even these churches, they will go, they will be the ones to go and invite them again to come and spoil everything. The damage they have is very little. The wound they have is very little. They will go and invite them to come and increase everything. Okay, you see Abrakata right in the house of God. Pastor calling that fire. Wow. Inside this, people shout, hey, this man is a Jesus is watching at the church. He's calling the church to come back home, but the church refuses. 
Don't buy a level. The Antichrist empowered his ministers and sent them to go and influence the ministers of God and bring them into errors. There are some ministers, they are specially empowered by the devil for them to bring other ministers to them. One of the ways the devil empowers them is with words. That is why all these false prophets, they have money in abundance, they have wealth in abundance. And you see them, they go and meet with the new child of God. They call you them, they talk to them, you see. Just come and join me, I will tell you what to do, and you become like me. You see, I'm very rich, money is not my problem, I have cars in abundance, I have houses in abundance. And is that minister of God? Is that godly enough? He will fall into that same error. They will fall into that same error. That is why today you see ministers of God who have ungodly friends. The ungodly men of God lure them into error. This is the purpose of the Antichrist for the children of God. For the minister, he will empower his own, he will call his own, give them a vision, empower them with words, and send them out into the world for them to deceive and draw genuine ministers away from God. That is why pastors you need to be very careful with the kind of friends you have. Because they must surely come to influence you with the word given to them by the devil. Be very careful. And not only minister, you Christians, be very careful of the kind of friends you have. Be very careful. Because all these people they are assigned by the devil against you. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number 12. The Antichrist spirit brought fornication and adultery into the church. That is why today, by a master, impregnated by a mistress. Pastor having an affair with by a mistress. Pastor having an affair with members. And on Sunday, you see automatic signs and wonders flowing in the church. You see how the Spirit of God has, the Spirit of the Antichrist has torn the church of God upside down. They has destroyed the church of God. He has given the church a deadly wound. Yes, in the night, the pastor sleep with my mistress. Maybe that day was Saturday. On Sunday, come and see I can by the church. That is the day that the pastor said will be hopeful that we begin to see vision. To see into hidden things. The Antichrist. Fornication and adultery. That today you see pastor's wife sleeping with you later. Inside the church. Oh, the Lord is crying every day for the church. May the Lord deliver his church from this error in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number 13. The Antichrist took away godliness and the fear of God and brought in the fear of man into the church. That today, you see people, they no longer honor God, they no longer fear God, they fear their past of God and God. They honor and fear their past of God and God. Many of them will say, hey, if I go, my pastor, my pastor will suspect me. It is better for that pastor to suspend you and you enter heaven than for you to remain in a position when you enter hellfire. You are afraid of your pastor. You are afraid of your pastor. You are no longer afraid of God. The Bible says that fear not them. And the Bible that says this are the boss of Jesus. Jesus Christ told the disciples, He said, Fear not them who are able to kill your body, but they cannot touch the soul. He said, But rather, fear me who is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. When Jesus said, You should not fear any man who can kill this your mortal body, but they cannot touch your soul, then it means you should not. 
not be afraid of anybody. When you are standing for the truth, stand for the truth, don't be afraid of what man can do to you. When you know the truth, when you are preaching the truth, continue to preach the truth. Don't be afraid. God is with you. Jesus, he told the disciples before he went to heaven, he said, no, I am with you. Always, even to the end of the war. Jesus is with his people. When you know the truth, speak the truth, and Jesus will be there to back you up. You don't need to be afraid of man. You don't need to be afraid of man. That is why all these ladies, as if I see them, will not tell you to want them. I want them. I am not afraid of them. I am not afraid of them. If they like, they come with their evil man. It doesn't concise me. I am not concerned whether they come evil or with no man. All I came to tell them is the word of God. And when I came to tell them the word of God, Jesus is there to do his work. You don't need to be afraid of them. Do not be afraid of anybody who can kill your body, but they cannot touch your soul. Stand for your God. Hold on to your God and you see the handwork of your God in your life. Number 14. Huh? Number 14. The spirit of the Antichrist entered into the church and brought in more than the Christianity into the church. The modern day Christianity is a very deadly and devilish Christianity. During those days, in the 70s, in the 60s, Christianity was Christianity, not now that everything has fallen upside down. They destroyed everything. The level of Greek Christianity, the spirit of the Antichrist has destroyed it and it brought in modern day Christianity. And this modern day Christianity, this is where you have Sunday, Sunday worshiper. Weekly activities, they are not there. Only on Sunday that you see their faces in the church. Hey, the church needs to wake up. The church needs to wake up. The Antichrist has given deadly wound to the church of God. He has given a deadly wound to the church of Christ. And the children of God, they are there watching and the moon, growing worse every day. Instead of them to return back to their nation. When the children of Israel, when they sin against God, what God did to them, God sold them out to the hands of their enemies. But because God is a loving father, when they cry to God, God will send them to the river. That is God for you. But today, the Christians of this last days, no matter what, they don't want to turn to God. They don't want to turn to God. They don't want to turn to God. Again, all they want is prosperity in sin, their business booming in iniquity. That is what they want. Praise the Lord. Number 15, the Antichrist entered into the church and destroyed the original standard of God and gave the church his own standard. Now, God has a standard and without you living up to that standard of God, there is no way you can enter in this kingdom. The standard of God, holiness, righteousness, purity, Sanctification, all this, they have all the standard of God. The standard of the death, then you have fornication, you have adultery, you have life, and so on. The Antichrist has succeeded in destroying the true standard of God in the house of God, and he gave them an, another standard. He gave them his own standard. That you see, Christians, they not live up to the standard of the world, they're not up to the standard of God. He's saying this and he's trying every day. He's trying every day. He's trying every day. He's trying every day. But the Lord 
spray from the church. That is why in some churches, the Holy Spirit is not there. The spirit that is operating there is the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist spirit is the one operating instead of the Antichrist. Instead of the Holy Spirit to be the one operating. The spirit of the Antichrist is the one there operating. Operating and why the spirit of God trust moving in the way. It was after the death and resurrection and the ascension of Jesus that the Holy Spirit came down to planet Earth to me. During those days, in those days, during the days of Ezekiel and Isaiah, the Holy Spirit always remained in heaven. He comes out once in a while. And that is why Ezekiel will always say the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Holy Spirit came upon him then once in a while. The witness God once in a while that when Jesus came, we now have the Holy Spirit with us. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number 20. Number 20. The Antichrist made the people of God to believe the doctrine of the devil and the doctrine of this world and made them to believe foul spirits. He made them to believe foul spirits. They no longer believe the spirit of God. But the spirit of God sent a message to them that this one can't see his own. That one doesn't concern me. When Ahab was destined to go and die in Ramadilla, God was the one who had raised the death of Ahab. God had a beating. He called all the demons. He said, Who will go and persuade Ahab that he will go to Ramadilla and fall? So that he could go there and die. The spirit came in this, he said, in this manner and other. And the Bible says that the spirit came before the Lord and told the Lord, I will go and I will be in lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets of Ahab. Ahab was a man who loved prophets. If you are here, you always love prophets. One day they will prophesy you into doom. You love prophets. Ahab loved prophets. How can a man, only one man, you have 450 prophets. Only you. Only one man, you have 450 prophets. And these 450 prophets prophesy you into doom. But a true prophet of God, he won't hear. Ahab, don't go. The sheep of that one that I picked it up and he went and he gave me the star. How will the spirit of the Lord give me a one spirit to me? No man can hold the spirit of God to himself. It is not possible. God's spirit is meant for everyone. And whoever the spirit of God chooses to reveal himself to, whoever the spirit of God chooses to speak to, that is what he does. You cannot tell the spirit of God what to do. And they have because God was the one who arranged his death. The true prophet of God, he put him in peace and said, he will go and come back. And the prophet told him, if you go and come back, then the Lord has not spoken by you. And what happened to Ahab? He went, he never came back. He died. He died. Ahab believed the first spirit of all his prophets. Lord deliver his church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number 21. The Antichrist made the children of God to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. He made them to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Today, you say the hand of the Spirit of God. The Antichrist will enter somebody, will enter the people of God. They begin to blaspheme. Now, this is not the Spirit of God now. This is not the spirit of God, this is the spirit of the devil. And whereas it is the spirit of God moving. He made them to blaspheme, to say all sorts of words against the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness. There is no forgiveness. When somebody has genuinely received the Holy Ghost and the person is now speaking in tongues, you open your mouth and blaspheme. Say that is not the spirit of God. You have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. To see what the Antichrist has done. In 
face the people of God to blaspheme against the Spirit of God. He made them to blaspheme against the Spirit of God. Number 22. The Antichrist made the people of God to prophesy, see vision, and speak in tongues in sin. So you see, when he came to the truck, rap, 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 speaking in tongues. Inside the church. When you get one, when he came to speaking in tongues inside the church. So you see how the robber speaking in tongues. You see how the hand of Christ has come to the church of Christ for Simon. He has succeeded in, in watering down the standard of God in the church. When he gets us today, now speak in tongues. And don't trust prophesy. You see visions anyhow. You see visions anyhow in the house of God. Things are really going wrong in the church. And the church needs to wake up and correct that error. They need to wake up and correct these errors in the church. We get quiet. We are watching. We are watching. No wonder Jehovah said, Who shall bring me into that city? God is looking for somebody that will invite him in. Because God is not a God that lay hands on any man suddenly. He said, Without your will, I will do nothing. Without you allowing God, there is no way God can move. God is looking for people who are ready to return to him, who are ready to bring him into this situation. And he will come and take care of the situation that today is nobody. 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 God said, if I be a father, here is my honor. If I be a master, here is my fear. But today, people, they no longer honor God, they no longer fear God. God has it because it's their priest. You see, a child of God, a Christian, what you cannot do to your grandfather, what you cannot give to your father, you give it to God. You give it to God. You have a ton five hundred naira to to sell it. David. What you will give to your fellow human being that your fellow human being will reject it, you bring it to the church and you give it to God. Wow, it's going wrong to the church, and the church is sat down and watch it. The world is get out of hand. It's a big religion. The reason why it's a big religion. He's been introduced into the church by the Antichrist because he wants to bring the whole world under one world religion and one world government. And the Antichrist is gradually implementing this into the church. That is why the Antichrist is not using the book to achieve that one world religion. This one world
father, your dead mother has come to me. Please focus on me. You see, your dead father, your dead mother is talking to you in the dream. All these are ancestral spirits outside. You are going to pray. Every ancestral spirit.